God, the rush of Christmas is gone. Now that you and I have enjoyed the presents uh, that we had been sharing with one another and the beautiful meals and dinners and lunches that we had over Christmas, the humdrum and all the noises and all the Christmas lights that we enjoyed has come to an end. It's a time and a day where you can say, that's the day. The 31st is a day where you can reflect, begin to review, to reset yourself for what's coming ahead. And you know what? Good news is 2023 is coming in about an hour's time or something like that. The bad news is you and I do not know what is packaged in 2023. Let me start again. Here's the good news. 2023 is coming. Here's the sad news. The sad news is we do not know what 23 has packaged for you and I. But I've got good news for you. Good news? Good news is Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. There is only one person who knows what's going to happen in 2023. Here we go. Let's see what it says. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. And we'll see what God is saying to our lives as we step into this new year. Let's read all of us together. One, two, go. Stop right there. Stop right there. Don't rush when you read the Bible. Somebody knows. Somebody thought somebody knows. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You and I don't know what 2023 is going to give us. Another virus? I don't know. A war? I don't know. Economic collapse? I don't know. But there is good news to 2023. Somebody knows. And that sets me free from worrying therefore about what has not yet happened. Because if he knows, let's see what he knows. The Bible says, one to go, let's read once again together. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. What are those plans? Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and the future. Give God a big hand just for that. You serve a God who already declares tonight that on the 31st of December 2022, you may not know what's coming, but God says, I know what's coming. And a part of that which is coming is I've got plans I have set for you. Amen. And the plans I've set for you, God says, are plans to prosper you. God says the plans I've set for you are plans not to harm you. These plans I have for you are plans to give you a hope and a future. Now shout with me and say, 2023, 2023. I, have I have a hope and I have a future. Shout it once again. 2023, 2023. It's, my best it's my best year. Because I have a hope and I have a future. Having established that, that we have got somebody who knows our big G-O-D. He knows what's going to happen in 2023. It saves me from the stresses of worry, from the stresses of the fear of the unknown, from the stresses of knowing exactly what's going to happen with my life, my family, my marriage, my children, my son, my daughter. I thank God that God has given me a blueprint, something that is there, that is written already about my life. He says he has got plans for me to be prosperous and has got plans not to harm me, but plans to give me a future and a perfected ending. Somebody shout amen. No wonder, therefore, Paul says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 to 14. Here's what Paul says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 to 14. Because if God says he has got plans over my life, listen to what he says, want to go. Not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that 
for which Christ took hold of me. Listen what Paul says. Paul says, while I am in this world, while I live the years that God has given me, there's one thing that I can, I, can, I can be guaranteed of. God has got plans for me. And the plans that God does for me are plans for me to have a future and a perfected ending. And because of that perfected ending that God has set for me, while I am here on earth, I am not folding my hands, Paul says. He says, not that I have already obtained all this. I have already arrived at my goal, rather, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ took hold of me. Paul is wanting you and I to understand that there is no time for us to relax and to sit down and we think it's going to fall on our lap. God is wanting us to understand through the words of the Apostle Paul that there is something I am marking or pressing toward to and that is the thing that I'm believing God that is going to happen over my life. And I believe that God can help us as we begin to see as we answer the question, uh, what Paul is uh, uh, saying to us here. I believe understanding that the anticipation for what's coming tomorrow is known by God. What is therefore supposed to be our response as God's people? I've got three questions that I believe are pivotal and that are important for you before you enter 2023 because you see when we come to the end of the year like this in the th on the 31st of December we all wish the best for the year that's coming we all desire to see the best that the year has set for our lives but I believe if you and I are gonna have the best year for 2023 let me see those who are ready for the best year 2023 yeah that's right that's right how many of you are saying 2022 I'm done with you please go Okay, good, 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 good. If that's going to happen, there are three questions that I believe that need to be asked of you. And these questions, you need to ask them genuinely over your life before you enter another season or before you enter into the year that's coming. Now, question number one, I'm going to give it to you right now. It is the question that I want you to note. You can write it down if you're writing down, but I want to make sure that everyone gets this question. Three questions to ask before the new year. And question number one, what do I need to put off? And what do I need to put on? Question number one, what do I need to put off? And what do I need to put on? Can you say that with me? What do I need to put off? Mm-hmm. Say it again. If I'm going to have the best year for 2023, that's a key question you need to ask yourself. There are many questions when you come to the end of the year that people or that you can find on Google. But I have made it simple for you. I did all the hard work for you. And I believe for me, there are only three. First one, what do I need to put off and what do I need to put on? That question is a key factor in your life if you're going to enjoy the year that's coming. If you're going to live your life successful and enjoy what God has set for you. What does it mean? These are the words that you'll find throughout the scriptures, that in the scriptures, the Bible talks a lot about putting on a new garment. You'll find it throughout the scriptures, actually the foundational text, which is declared under the law of first mention, declares this, whatever you see established in the foundation, it runs across as a pattern throughout your life. The very first thing, when Adam and Eve were created by God, they were clothed with something. God clothed them with his glory. The glory of God clothed them in such a way that the Bible says there was no shame, there was no fear, there was no insecurity. So when God clothes you, when God covers you, your life is guaranteed a success. Question, what do I need to put off and what do I need to put on? Why is that important? Because after they fell in Genesis chapter 3, we know what happened. The first thing they ran to 
was to prepare fig leaves. And the fig leaves became their covering. But like somebody said, somebody said so well, that fig leaf is an acronym that represents they put on fear on them. They put on insecurity on them. They put on guilt on them. That's fig. Leaf. They put on loneliness on them. They put on emptiness in them. And you know that to be true? Every human being born in this world, black or white, Indian, colored, American, Canadian, Australian, every human being born in this world, male and female, you are born with one thing common. There is a vacuum in your life. Searching. Adam and Eve, when they clothed themselves with the fig leaves, they were putting themselves in fear, insecurity, guilt, loneliness, emptiness, anxiety, and frustration. So it's important that if I'm going to see the beauty of the coming year 2023, I need to know what am I clothing myself with. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22, you'll find out what it says, something very, very important in Ephesians 4 and verse 22. I see that my worker on the PowerPoint is gone. Ephesians 4 and verse 22, you'll see something there, something there, very, very, very important, what the Apostle Paul says. Ephesians 4 and verse 22. Let's go in on Let's see what it says. I want us all of us to read together in Jesus' name. One, to go. You were taught with regard to... Mm-hmm. Twenty-four. <laughs> I know you didn't read it with me. Let's read it together right now. From verse 22, all of us to go. Give me the vivaciousness and the gumption of Destiny Point Christian Church and all other ministries that are gathered here tonight. One, two, go. Verse 22. You were taught with regard your former way of life to put off your old self which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires and then to be made new in the attitude of your mind and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness so 2023 is doable to those people, number one, who are prepared to put off and put on. If you learn the principle of putting off and putting on, will help you as a child of God because it's something we do every day when we are dressed, when we clothe ourselves. I hope so. Some people can stay with one shirt for two weeks. But, but you are designed as you change your clothes every day, the desire of walking with God, I wanted to catch that in your spirit because walking with God is not a once and it's done issue. It is something that happens consistently. I put off, I put on. I put off and I put on. There are things that in my life I begin to understand that Christianity is a putting off and a putting on. The trap that you find yourself in as a child of God, these here are some of the traps that you find yourself in is the trap of perfectionism. The trap of perfectionism, it states that you and I will think, once I am perfect in one area, I think I am done. And the problem with that attitude is you can be perfect in one area, but as you continue to go March, April, May, and you fall down, your mind begins to tell you that I have failed. I'd rather continue just living the way that I'm living anyway. Because perfectionism is not of God. Let me say this to you. There's a revelation. A revelation is coming. 2023 is not a perfect year. Better. 2023, you are not perfect. But 2023, God is perfecting you. Come on, talk to me somebody. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. That, that will deliver you. It will deliver you from being a religious demagogue. Because most of us, we are caught up with religious mindset. That says that I need to be perfect before God uses me. I need to be perfect before I do things for God. There are people that will stop even to be baptized. I can't be baptized because I am not ready. The truth is you'll never be ready. Come on. Come on. So it's important for you to know that if you're going to be all that which God wants you to be, is the principle of putting off, somebody shout putting off, and then putting on. Now you know, just like we do with our clothing, we put on, but before we put on, we put off. The problem with us in the spiritual way of doing things, many of us, the end of the year, 31st of December, we put off, but some of us don't cover ourselves again and therefore you remain naked and vulnerable. That's a problem. That's a problem. So here we go. Let's see how we need to go. I need to put off and put on. I need to put on and put on. Here's an example. Somebody shout cake. cake. That's a beautiful cake there that you see there. You see, I know, I know most minds here, probably not everybody, but most minds here in 2023, you've told yourself you're going to be in shape. I know, I know. You've told yourself, I'm going to diet, I'm going to just do the right thing and I'll eat healthy. But here's the problem. The problem is, you are saying, you are looking at the cake, and that cake represents the old. It represents the what? But here's what you do. You are looking at the cake. Uh-uh. 2023 is my year. Cake. Uh-uh. I'm not coming even close to you, Cake. 2023 is my year in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> the next day you get closer. I said 2023 is my year. No, Cake, no. You are not going to tempt me. Because my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I know what I'm going to feed my body with. Okay? You hear? <laughs> Following day. <laughs> hey! If you're Pentecostal like the destinies, you begin now to shout. And you say, Hey! Not on this body. Because I belong to Christ. And I will not touch you. Actually, Kate, when I look at you, you already... <laughs> you are smelling, Kate. I don't need you, Kate, in my life. Following day. Kate? <laughs> ah, I'm going to eat only for today, Kate. Okay? And I will continue with my diet tomorrow. And I'll tell you why there is a problem with that philosophy. Because when you continue to say no without turning to yes, this is the fruit. Somebody said fruit. This is the life that you want. But your problem is you are continuously looking at the no. You are in the no zone. Many of you do that. You are always on the no zone. That's why I often say to people, if you want to detox your life, whether from drugs, from alcohol, from cigarettes, don't just say, no, I'm not going to touch without going to what you're going to replace it with. Because if you don't replace that which you have said no to, you will end up being defeated by that which you are saying no to. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Because the principle, the principle is I put off, but I don't stop there. Many of you, you depend here in what I call willpower. Willpower in your life for all your dreams for 2023. Reason why they don't finish February. Let me help you. It is because you are always focusing on what you don't want to do. Amen. But if you focus on what you don't want to do, 
and you don't build your life on what you want to do. It's the same thing. You stop smoking, then you stop going to the house of God. I can tell you, you're not gonna, you're gonna fail. You stop drinking, and you stop attending things that will build your spiritual life. It's not gonna work. The idea is called the law of replacement. What I say no to, I must then find what I say yes to. If I say no to gossip, I must find now what I say yes to prayer. I say no to lying. I must therefore hold on to people that speak the truth in this side. Because if I say no to sin, no to lies, no to gossip, no to malice, but then I am empty in not feeling myself there, then you are not fulfilling what the Bible says. For the Bible says you put off and then you put on. That was just my little illustration. You are allowed today after I finish. Finish that cake. <laughs> that cake is not going back to my house. <laughs> Somebody shout amen. amen. So what is question number one? What do I need to put off and what do I need to put on? Because the key principle in understanding in our walk with God is what I say no to must be replaced with what I say yes to. In your life as a child of God, the 2023 year that you are waiting for, for in order for it to be the best year for you, always remember, you are a work in progress. Paul says, not that I have already attained it. Paul said in Philippians 3 verse 12, I haven't reached it yet, but there's one thing that I'm confident of. I keep pressing forward. I refuse to be hung up by my past. So I keep pushing to where I am going so that I can reach my goal to what Christ has called me. I pray for you therefore that in these last few minutes as we enter 2023, may you be able to say, Lord, what are the things I need to replace? What, what is it in my life? I need to look into my life and say, this one old, this one old, this one old. Some of those things are habits. Some of them are attitudes. Some of them are people. It's important in your life for you to understand that if you continue, it is often says previous patterns are a prediction of your current behavior. If you do not change what you are doing in 2022, I can guarantee you right now, you will end 2023 the same way you ended 2022. Did you hear what I've just said? Because previous patterns are a prediction of your current behavior. The, the dreams you shouted about when we began 2022, we were right here and you were saying 2022 is my year. But the problem is you declared it, you confessed it, you cried about it, you said it, and you positively confessed about it, but you did nothing about it. The strategy of working with God is whenever God has a dream, he strategizes. When he wanted his people to come out of Egypt, they came out of Egypt and there was the Red Sea in front of them. The Red Sea in front of them looked like an obstacle, but God maximizes his power over the obstacle that was in front of them. And the Red Sea parted. Why? Because God, with every problem, there is a strategy. Every problem for 2023, it has a packaged strategy in it. Remember, God says, you don't know what's in 2023. You do not know what's going to happen in March. You don't understand what's going to happen in August. You don't know exactly what will take place in November, in October of 2023. But God says, I know. The same God who says he knows is the same God who says, lean on me, trust me. In order for you to trust me, put off old desires, put off the old habits, put off the old lifestyle, and start feeding things that leave you healthy. Feed on things that will make you to go forward with your life. Somebody shout amen. amen. Run away from people that are enemies of your progress. Ask yourself as a child of God where you are. 
that what is the year that I, I have in focus that I want to see myself involved in. That year it is possible only when you trust what God has said. I know the plans I have for you. And I serve a God who knows the plans he has for me. It doesn't matter about your background. It doesn't matter about what happened. It doesn't matter about your parentage. It doesn't matter about your culture. It doesn't matter about your pedigree. The truth is that God who says he knows and has got plans for you, that God has declared, Hebrews 13, I will never leave you and I will not forsake you. Be encouraged tonight. I want you to catch this in your spirit. What is it that you desire for 2023? What is your dream for 2023? What is your desire? What is your aspiration for 2023? All things are possible. Only if you believe what God's word has said. I know the plans I have for you, says my God. Plans I have for you is to give you a future and to give you a perfected ending. That project that you have in mind can be fulfilled. That business project you have in mind can be done. Whatever you wish to see happen in your life can be fulfilled. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord God Almighty. Somebody shout glory. glory. Question number one, what do I need to put off and what do I need to put on? But not only that, in 2023, if you're going to see that year and see the fruitfulness of that which God has set for you, I want you to ask question number two. And the question number two is, where are the closed doors and where are the open doors? I told you I did the hard work for you. <laughs> where are the closed doors and where are the open doors? Because you know, what has made you fail all these years? You find yourself in a cycle, in a pattern of failing. You start up well, you are vivacious, you are all gang on, that is going to happen, this is going to be the best day of my life. But the reason why it doesn't last, it is because you don't seem to be understanding the principle of doors when you walk with God. Because there is something there when you walk with God that Apostle Paul is going to help us to see. What does it say in anger? Let's go there and First Corinthians chapter 16 and verse Nine. Let's read all of us together. One to go. Because you can tell that some of you are already on your beds, you are asleep. <laughs> but please come back, come back, come back and help Pastor Josh. Let's all read all of us together. There is power in reading the word in the atmosphere. One to go. Because a great door for effective work has opened to me and there are many who oppose me. The problem is you were taught in Christianity that when doors are closed is the devil. You were taught that when doors are right wide open it means it's God. That's true but it is the half truth. If you think only that God opens and he never closes. There are some doors I'm happy that got closed. Yeah. Every time I go to Zimbabwe, there are a lot of girls that I wanted to marry. And when I go to Zimbabwe now and I see them, I say, oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you, you closed that one. You closed that one, you closed that one, you closed that one. Because then it seemed as if good door. But 29 years later, Mm -mm. I don't think so. So it's important for you to listen to what Paul says because a great door for effective work has opened to me. I wish you can get that in your spirit. 2023, there are open doors for many of you. And the doors that God has opened, it is helpful for you to know that with every door that God opens, it has got enemies. That's the Bible. There are many who are opposing. The fact that there is opposition in my life does not mean God doesn't care. The fact that there is opposition in my life does not mean God is not in it. The fact that, that there is opposition in what I am doing does not mean God favors that one except me. The fact that there is opposition in my life does not necessarily mean there is sin in my life. 
But we've been taught that way. If it is hard, if it is difficult, it is because the devil doesn't want you to go through that. And the Bible wants you to understand, he says, a big, great door has been opened. But I'm also aware that with every door that God has opened, it's not going to be a walk free or it's not going to be just bread and butter. It's going to be difficult. But I am ready for those that are opposing this great door that God has opened for me. He goes on to say something very, very interesting in the, in, in the other verse. What is the verse? Let's read that one together. Acts chapter 16, verse 6. Paul is in one of his missionary journeys. And here's what he says. Paul and his companions, they traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. I love that. That is in my life for 2023 coming. There are places that God will say, no, don't go there. There are areas that God will say, no, don't do that. In 2023, I must be ready. I must be ready to understand that there are things that God will say, don't do that. And I need to be aware as a child of God. Paul and his companions, they traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. And watch that. They were actually told, don't go to this place and preach the word. God said that. And the next verse, it says, when they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. 2022, there are doors that God opens. And there, are God, there are doors that God will close for you. Find it in your heart to keep walking with him. Keep walking with God when God closes certain doors in your life. It's a truth that will help you as you serve God. That in my life, you don't need a God that says yes, yes, yes to everything. You need a God that says sometimes wait. You need a God that says turn left, turn right. You need a God that says keep on going. You need a God that says keep on moving forward. And this is one thing that you will see in that verse. It says, when they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. But next verse, you know, okay? So they passed by Mysia and went down to Troas. Keep going. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. When they went to Phrygia, God said no. They went to Bithynia, God says no. They went to Mysia, God says no. When they arrived in Troas, the Bible says in Troas, Troas is that place that I call the middle. Troas is that place where you don't seem to be understanding exactly what's happening around your life. I know that to be true because some of you are finding yourself in Troas. Mm -hmm. You are in Armadale, Troas. Yeah. You are in Perth, Troas. Yeah. You are in whatever suburb you come from, Troas. Some of you have got girlfriends, Troas. And you've got boyfriends, Troas. Troas is a very tricky place because in Troas, you don't seem to be knowing exactly what's happening. If you're not careful in Troas, you do exactly what Abraham did. What Abraham did, he ended up helping God. And then Ishmael was born. Because Troas can be tricky. Because in Troas, you don't seem to be knowing what God is doing in your life. Because in Troas, sometimes your prayers don't seem to be answered. In Troas, you are fasting, you are binding, you are casting, you are losing, you are doing everything. But Troas is that place that seems to be the middle. You don't know exactly what God wants to do with your life. But if you keep on pressing in, if you keep on pressing in, here's what Paul says. There's one thing that I do. I keep pressing. You see, in Troas, you keep serving without understanding. In Troas, it's where you pray, even though you can't trust where God is. You keep trusting him, even though you can't touch him. Because God is not in the realm of feelings and emotions. You walk and construct by him by faith. And if you do not walk with God by faith, you're going to miss it. Because sometimes in Troas, you can't feel him. In Troas, you can't touch him. In Troas, it seems as if 
everything seems to be upside down. The Bible says it was at that place during the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. Last verse, 10. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Question number one, what do I need to put off and what do I need to put on for 2023? Question number two, that you need to ask yourself as you continue to serve with God, where are the closed doors in 2023 of my life, of my marriage, with my son, with my daughter? Things that I would love to see happen and they're not happening. Where does that leave me? Because for many of us, we fail in our journey with God because every opportunity that presents itself as hard and difficult, we give up on God. An opportunity that presents itself as if it's too tough, we think, oh, I'm done with Christianity. I'm done with God. It's just too hard. Christianity is too hard. We change religion. We don't go to church anymore. If you take an inventory of your life in 2022, I don't know how many Sundays you have been to church because you wanted, or you could have looked at yourself and say, I, th I see God doing something very unfair around my life. And therefore, there are times where you have given up your faith in him. But we are learning that the principle and the keys of entering a new year rallies on these three questions. What? do I need to put off? What do I need to put on? Where are the closed doors? And where are the open doors? When God opens them, praise the Lord. When doors are closed, praise the Lord. I keep pressing, moving forward in the direction of the conviction of my faith. Last question is I pray with you. It's a question that is very pivotal, that's very important for our lives as we serve God in this season of our life. And that's the third question that you need to ask yourself. What seems important and what is truly important? What seems important and what is truly important in my life. Matthew 6 and verse 25. Listen to what it says. Matthew 6 and verse 25. Let's see what it says. Matthew 6 verse 25. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life. What you will eat or drink about your body, what you will wear, is not life more than food and the body more than clothes. God is speaking. Verse 33. 33. Let's read that one together. One to go. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Verse 25. God wants you to know don't worry about food and clothing. I know you are in need of it. Simple, simple principle. What seems important to me and what is really should be important to me. What is the truth? What is of greater priority in 2023? God says, I feed the birds of the air. They don't gather in bands, but I take care of them. Do not worry therefore about what you're gonna eat and what you're gonna put on for tomorrow. Yes, I know about the unrest that is taking place around the world. I'm aware. The overwhelming attitudes around in our communities and in our cities. But God says, despite that, I do want you to know. You seek first. Make it a priority over your life. What seems to be important versus what is truly important over your life. Last verse. Chapter 22 and verse 36 of the book of Matthew. Listen to what it says. Teacher, which is the great, greatest commandment in the law? Listen to Jesus. 
Jesus replied, let's read that one together. One to go. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. In 2023, three questions. Question number one. What do I need to put off? And what do I need to put on? Two. Where are the closed doors in the 2023 of my life? Where are the open doors in the 2023 of my life? Regardless of open and closed doors, I'll keep on loving him and serving him. What seems important versus what truly is important before God. Love the Lord, your God. People who betray you in 2023, love the Lord your God. Some friends who forsake you, love the Lord, your God. You might lose a job, love the Lord, your God. There are things that will happen that will shock you. You will go to the doctor and you are given the report that you are not ready for. Still, love the Lord, your God. What seems important and what is really important? Love the Lord, your God. And love him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. These are the three questions I wanted you to ask yourself before we enter 2023. In Jesus' name. I want to ask right now to bow your heads down with me in prayer. I believe there are people that are here tonight that are saying on question number one, I want to put off my old way of living. I want to put off my old way of thinking. I want to put off and put a stop to gossip, a stop to lying, a stop to cheating. I want to put a stop to anger. Uncontrolled bouts of anger in my life. I want to put off every attitude that is not godly in my life. Before I enter the new year, What is it? Who is it? How long has it been? Every backpack of resentment and forgiveness, you can put it off this year. The pain that seems to be shimmering every time around your life. You have been rehearsing it every year, day in and day out, year in and year out. It's always about the same person that hurt you. You were a victim. You were abused. You were traumatized. You were hurt. You were raped. Something was taken away from you. You never got the same education like others. Things were hard. Why me? Why me? Why me? C.S. Lewis said a statement. As we are about to pray. Said a statement very, very powerful. You cannot go back to your past and change the beginning. But you can start where you are and change your ending. What happened, happened. Painful, yes, it was. But release yourself. The power of forgiveness and letting it go helps you. You are not doing them a favor when you forgive them. You are not doing anybody a favor 
when you let that go, you are doing yourself a favor. Tonight is that night where you can say to yourself, I'm ready to put it off. And I'm ready to put on something. I want to walk into 2023 a new man and a new woman. The Lord is here to do that over your life. Every closed door that the Lord will present yourself with and every open door that the Lord will open up for you. Keep your trust in Him. And lastly, just hold on to the principle of those things that are critical, that are a priority. Hold on to God. Don't let Him go. Church may disappoint you. Religion may let you down. But love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your spirit. I want to pray for people that are saying that. It might be on question one, on question two, question three, it doesn't matter. I just want to pray for people here today that are saying, you know what? I think I'm ready to move on with my life. I'm going to ask the ministry team to come forward and utilize the next 20 minutes to pray for you. We want to pray for you because we believe in you. We want to pray for you because you believe in that which you carry. As you come forward, there are many of you that have got written down their dreams, their desires. You come here by faith. You come here believing. And let's see the power of the living God revealed over your life. There is a breakthrough anointing in this place that I believe the Lord wants to establish over each and every individual. Spirit of the living God, I pray. Rain down in this place and touch your people. Touch each and every individual that is saying before God tonight, I want to move on with you. There might be people here today right now that do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. It's a simple prayer. You can just pray to God today and say, Lord, I love you. I'm coming back to you. Some of you are backslidden. Some of you have moved far away from him. Some of you are confusing God with your church. Church can hurt you. Church can betray. Church can be hypocritical. But God is faithful. Amen. Take God in your life. That's all I want you to take. I want to invite you to stand on your feet together with me, all of us, in the presence of the living God, as we come before him in prayer. mind with your hands just lifted up this posture when you lift up your hands like this the way that I'm doing it's a way of surrender it's a way of saying Lord I give you all it's a way of saying Lord you know my heart it's a way of saying Lord I can't help me it's a way of saying Lord I'm stuck it's a way of saying Lord it's still painful it's like it happened yesterday it's a way of saying Lord but I want to give it all to you I surrender it to you because you are the only one that can guide my life and lead me. Say this prayer right now with me all over this building, all of us. Let's say this in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, in the name in the name of Jesus, Jesus I present my life, present my life a, living a living sacrifice before you, O oh God. Before, you, oh God. before the end of this year, I make a decision. I choose you above everything else. Come into my life. Cleanse me. I want to walk in newness of life. Tell him, I put off the old life. I put on the new garment. A new attitude. A new mindset. New way of walking. From today. 
From today, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for setting me free. For setting me free from every sin. From every sin, and I walk with you. And I walk with you now and forevermore. Now and forevermore. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God.